<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're going to be doing a little GitHub tutorial for Flipper Zero users. I've just noticed a lot of people who are new to Flipper are also new to Git, uh, some of the ideas behind Git and GitHub, and so I figured a little visual tutorial might be helpful. Git is what's considered version control software. It was developed by Linus Torvald, the head developer and creator of the Linux kernel. Uh, and in a very simple explanation, uh, what it does is allows us to have these repositories, primary code base repositories, usually. Uh, and from there, users can take this available code and bring it into their computers or into their own repositories. Uh, they're able to work with and interact with this code, develop, patch, uh, you know, tweak. And then from there, they have a few options. They can either uh, use it locally and never share this uh, back out to anybody. They, if, they, if they really like it and they think it's beneficial for everybody, they might attempt to push it into the back up into the main repository for integration. So uh, the people in the main repository can look at it and say, well, this is a good idea. We want to integrate this and it'll kind of automatically integrate this code in. Uh, then we also have the opportunity to fork. And that's a pretty common thing in the open source world with the, when the licenses allow it, uh, you can take code, create a, you know, a derivation that has some of your own changes to it and then redistribute that. That's one of the, the powerful uses of open source software. Now for Flipper Zero users, we're not generally doing, you know, we're not generally working with software. A lot of the times we're looking at databases uh, or repositories that are filled with different signals, uh, different codes, and uh, a lot of different applications that are available for the Flipper that are community based. So let's take a second and let's look at this page, we're looking at the Flipper, uh, Flipper, one of the Flipper IRDB or infrared remote databases. Uh, this is a, a fun little project. Now Git is not exclusive to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is just the largest of these online repositories or sets of repositories. It's also like GitLab and a, a bunch of others. Uh, but Git, GitHub is the most common. You're probably going to run into the, one of these GitHub pages sooner rather than later. Let's take a peek. Let's go down first. So we're going to skip all this intimidating stuff and we're going to go down here. This is what's considered the readme. And, uh, you know, people who take good care of their repositories usually have a pretty descriptive uh, section here that either tells us, you know, what's in the repository and how to use it, uh, or, you know, maybe how it, where like pre-compiled binaries for different software might be, or how to uh, take the code and uh, compile it yourself. So, uh, if you're having problems or confusion, uh, definitely always check a readme file. Readmes uh, a lot of times have some of the the biggest, you know, um, troubleshooting issues addressed in them. Uh, this particular one, you know, tells us how to capture remotes, uh, and if you wanted to send the remotes to or those, uh, you know, different signals to them, what format they they prefer, uh, how to create your own by hand. This is a bunch of fun information in here. Uh, and now we can go back to the top. So what we have over here is the repository structure, right? If we keep clicking through these, we're actually going to start finding files. Like this is the infrared remote file. Now there's no place to just download this infrared remote file. So maybe we can go over here and copy it, right? And so that we can copy it and then we can uh, create an IR file. And then we're going to paste this IR file and we're going to write it and there we go now we have one down and a whole lot more to go because that's, a, that's obviously a terrible way to approach creating or you know to get downloading one of these databases let's go back to the beginning i'm going to give you the easiest way this doesn't even involve using git but i will also go over why this is not the best way to do this long term and this is the quick solution so we're going to go to code and i'm going to go down here to download zip now, I do believe you have to be on the desktop version. I don't think this works on like the mobile version, uh, but we're going to go here. I, I already have created a folder for myself that says Git. Uh, and so this is my Git folder. You want to be descriptive. Uh, and then I'm going to click. Well, actually, no, no, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to create a new folder that says Flipper IRDB. There we go. 
uh, be descriptive, you know? And then we're gonna save it there. I think I saved it there. Actually, might not have saved it there. Either way. Uh, no, no, I guess I did. So we're gonna go to here. Uh, so now I have my flipper.zip. I'm gonna unzip it. And there we go. I have all of the necessary information to send to my flipper. So I can I can uh, add all of the, the really cool infrared codes that I have now. I can I can take those. Uh, oh yeah, I'll try it again. And I have all the stuff I want. And I can take this in a regular file manager and I can drag and drop stuff over. I you know I don't recommend using the file management in the apps, definitely eject the SIM or the SD card and use a card reader in your PC. It's faster and it, it gives you access to modern day file management stuff like drag and drop that's not really feasible in the the uh, the flipper itself. So and and the the way that that's all structured. So pull your card out, add these things through the card reader. Uh, but you can you can do all that with these folders. We have it all. The drawback to this is that repositories change. They change a lot. You can see there's been changes six days, five days, four days ago. There's things change. There's things being added. Uh, you know, maybe applications are changing, and so a new comp newly compiled version of that application might be available. Uh, sometimes APIs break and change. Uh, there's a lot of development going on. So we're going to want to have a very up to date version of uh, these repositories and going over here to code and download and, and just repeating this process ad nauseum is not very easy. Uh, so we're going to bypass that and we're going to jump or not, not that it's not easy. It's just you're going to end up with like a bunch of extra folders that are taking up space or you're going to have to sit there and delete and it's just inconvenient, let's say. So we're going to try using Git, the actual Git software now. Now, if I, I'm on Linux and if I needed to install it on, on a Debian based distribution, I would simply go sudo apt install git. And I'd have git because git is basically available on every single distribution. You might need to use uh, apt if you're using Debian or Ubuntu based version. Maybe you use DNF if you're using Fedora uh, or Pac Man if you're using. Uh, an arch based distribution. Either way, uh, if I hit enter and I'm not, I'm not going to bother because I already do have this installed. I'd be asked to, to uh, give my password and then it'll go through and then I'll ask if I want to install. I'd say yes and I have git installed. Now, if you're on Windows, I think you have to go to uh, git scm.com uh, or possibly another page. I, I'm not 100% positive. Uh, I haven't done it myself. I don't like plan on doing it, uh, but you can download and install Git. I do think that the Git commands in the terminal though are the same. So let's go over some of the basic Git commands. Uh, I'm gonna go use, give you two today, uh, and these two will pretty much get you everything you need, uh, but there's a lot more complex and fun functionality uh, for you know when, when you need to figure that out as you expand your knowledge set. So we're gonna start off with Git clone. Uh, we're going to actually, yeah, we're going to sit in here. So we're going to go to git clone. Uh, now I'm going to go back to this main page. I'm going to go to code and I am going to copy this URL here. Uh, and I'm going to go to git clone, paste that in and enter and this is gonna bring in the entire repository so uh, uh no 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 and there we go so now we have the entire repository uh the same information we actually just got through that zip uh but with a, a little bit more so uh, we have this .git, .git attributes, .git ignore files. Uh, these are all going to help us when we run into uh, the next time that we want to update our repository. So I'm going to go to a repository 
that I have not updated in a, a little bit. Let's see. Um, I'm actually going to go to a non. Yeah, I'm going to go to a non flipper related one, but we're going to go to this. We have to be in the folder structure of your repository. We're going to go to this one over here uh, and I'm going to do git pull. And now right there, we just took all the differences between these two repositories. And I only had to download and install the differences. So you're not getting the entire thing in. It can tell the differences between your repository and the other repository uh, that you're, you're trying to match up with. And it'll basically bring in the entire thing, all the fresh information. It'll get rid of all the old stuff. Uh, and it's, it's very convenient for managing these because, again, you can end up getting kind of out of control in terms of how much disk space you're taking up if you're just consistently downloading new zip files. Uh, and so there you go. Yeah. Uh, so we want to use git clone to bring the repository in and then git pull. Uh, we'll get clone and the URL and then git pull will help us update these repositories as time goes on so that we can get the latest and greatest information from them. And I think that's about it with those two. You should be able to, uh, you know, get yourself started and, and understand how to get these different uh, extra helpful community pieces of information and software. Uh, I, I do recommend that you not necessarily just download these IR codes or uh, these sub gigahertz signals and just start randomly shooting them off. You really want to know what you're doing with them. Make sure that you're using them against devices that you already own. Uh, a lot of times it's just nice and easy that somebody else has already gone through the process of like finding all the remote buttons for your television uh, or whatever. You know, maybe you don't have to download or you don't have to capture every single one on every single remote in your house. Uh, but don't just go sending like sub gigahertz signals off randomly, that kind of stuff. It's, it's just not that much fun. And, and what you might find out is that a lot of uh, the things that you pull down from these repositories, you know, these are like international repositories, a lot of the codes may not even be useful for you and your everyday interactions. So, uh, you know, it's not always great to just download all these uh, and throw every single one on your device. Uh, but you know, why not? You, it's like there's really so much storage on the Flipper Zero. Like, I, like I've said, I mean, with my four gigabyte card, I'm doing just fine. 16, 32 bytes, you're going to be doing just fine uh, with like tons and tons of this different codes and stuff. But whatever. Hopefully it's been helpful. Hopefully, uh, it's, uh, you know, you, now you know a little bit about Git and you can start getting yourself going uh, and you can enjoy your Flipper Zero that much more. So I'm Rad Linux. Take care.